G'day Ziggy D here. Today Chris Wilson released a big juicy list of balance changes coming to Path of Exile for patch 1.0.0 launch. I have to say straight up that this uh, this document of all of these changes they're thinking of putting in the game and they're testing out and will likely be going into the launch is pretty exciting. These are all fantastic changes and I'm pretty hyped about all of them to be honest. But I will in this video go through give you guys a summary of what are the uh, major ones that are coming and I'll also give some of my initial analysis on these changes. But uh, big exciting times for Path of Exile. The more things I learn about this patch 1.0.0 launch the more excited and more hyped I'm getting for it. So, let's jump straight into it. Now the first thing Chris talked about was end game parity, this idea of end game parity. And this is basically a concept of making sure that uh, there's different ways of going about uh, farming in the end game, or different types of end game content that are all equally viable, uh, but in different ways, they achieve different things. Now currently mapping is the most effective way, hands down, to acquire wealth for your character, to level your character, to do pretty much everything. To do, get, do serious end game, you need to do the mapping system. But uh, Chris Wilson has in the past said that that's not what they want for the game. They want multiple different types of endgame. Currently we have things like, uh, you know, there's some PvP, there's different race events, and there's rerolling characters. These are all technically forms of endgame for Path of Exile. They're what keep you playing for a long time. But they also want more content that's viable for people who want to stay on their same character and improve their power and improve their wealth but uh, don't maybe want to get into maps. Maybe they want some different options. So, the summary of these changes are they're trying to make three things equally viable but in different ways. Firstly, we've got boss runs, we've got standard sort of farming of actual in-game content, and then we've got the map system, obviously. So, basically, for boss runs, what they're doing is they're doubling the rate basically roughly doubling the rate uh, that items, rare items drop from bosses. So basically what they want to do is make boss runs a viable way of acquiring a fair bit of wealth for your character. Now the highest level items will not drop from bosses. Uh, they, you know, they can give you some pretty decent uniques from these bosses, but to get the really good high-end uniques that you're going to need to get into mapping system, and that's something that you have to put behind that investment to make the game uh, have some longevity essentially. But for people that don't want to get into mapping and prefer to do boss runs, and there's a lot of people that really love doing boss runs in ARPGs. Uh, they like creating builds that can effectively farm bosses and combat bosses and do them efficiently, do them quickly, and uh, also survive in hardcore mode, obviously. Uh, so for those people, they're going to be giving uh, a, if, a, a good amount of incentive, especially. And this is also coming in line with a few magic find changes as well, so I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Next up, Chris also wants to make farming a bit more viable. Currently farming, like say farming docks currently in the current metagame, this will probably change once we get the new content, what actually zones people farm. But they want to make farming more viable for actually getting experience for your character. Currently it's a decent way to get endgame gear, uh, to get you know near endgame gear, you still can't get the best uniques and the highest le eye level items through normal farming outside of maps, but it's still a viable way to get pretty high level stuff and get pretty good gear and acquire a fair bit of wealth. However, it's not a viable way to level your character to 100, and this is what they want to change. So to change this, they're essentially uh, softening the experience penalty in these zones. So you can expect to whatever becomes the new docks farming zone, the new general farming zone, will actually not suffer from that greater experience penalty, even when you're getting to level 80 and level 90. You can keep farming those zones if you want, so maps won't be the only way to XP up. Now Chris says that this will take about the same amount of time that it currently takes to get to level 100, which suggests that maps actually won't be faster for getting XP, based on that wording. So. That's interesting that XP, uh, you won't need to invest a lot in maps to be able to XP your character just to get that really, really good and high level gear. So, and uh, maps obviously kind of staying the same they are because they want that to be behind that high currency and attention uh, investment into maps to be able to get that really high level gear. So that's all pretty good changes. I think more forms of end game content for people to farm, uh, more viable forms of end game content for people to farm is a really good thing. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, personally myself, I kind of I kind of like the map system, but it's also something I don't put a lot of time into myself. I don't usually have the time to really get seriously into the end game map system on all of my characters, so the ability to do some cool boss runs and make some boss farming characters and things like that is also pretty appealing. So next up we have some changes coming to auras. Now firstly they've already done a few changes to auras, removing a lot of the tricks that you could do to stack multiple auras and do a lot of like level changing, changing around skill gems and doing a lot of tricky stuff like that with certain uniques and things like that. They're removing as much of that as possible, they don't really want people to do this sort of things, these little mini exploits to get a lot of auras and a lot of power in their character that way. 
Now the next thing they're changing, that's um, you know, that's pretty pretty standard. We already kind of knew about that. But the next thing, the new thing that they've just announced now, which is actually I'm pretty excited about as well. I'm sure you're getting the thing that I'm excited about most of these changes is that they're making it so that auras individually are stronger, but they take more to reserve. They, they reserve more mana or life or whatever. So they um, come at a higher cost, but they're more powerful. Now the reason for this is from a, like a theming the game sort of point of view or making, uh, making your character choices a bit more impactful is that they want these auras to actually feel powerful. Currently a single aura, like putting anger on your character doesn't really make that much of a difference it doesn't feel like a big boost they want that to actually make a big difference and feel like a big boost They're putting this aura on your character is comes at a high cost but uh makes a bigger impact on how you play your character and makes things feel significantly different as well so that's pretty cool now uh to you still will be able to create characters that can go flat out on auras, but obviously they're going to have to spec more heavily into being able to do that, so it'll come at a higher cost again. So the idea is then that to get a good effect from auras, you don't need for every character you create to stack six auras like you kind of currently do. You should be able to, you know, do two or three uh, ones that really suit your character well, and then just use those ones and have them have a bigger impact, which is a pretty exciting change overall. Next up, we've got some changes to item quantity and rarity, basically magic finding. Now, Chris, a while back, uh, a couple days ago, announced that they would be not allowing item quantity, increased item quantity, in the new four-month leagues. So uh, they're removing all item qu quantity support gems and item quantity from gear, I believe. Item quantity mods on magic and rare items do not spawn. Uh, they still appear on the unique items, actually, so he has confirmed that. So it's inter interesting. You will be able to get increased item quantity on those items and I'm pretty sure it will still work but uh, yeah this gives them a good, uh, good chance to test out removing this stat from the game because basically the problem the reason Chris wanted to change this is that the extreme amount of item clutter on screen when you start getting into end game mapping and things like that and you're running a magic fine character just uh, you know a hundred item labels on screen you can't see anything going on isn't, isn't really that good for the game I don't think it's not good to watch on streams and it's not fun to play with it's not fun to sort through all that stuff so uh, removing that and testing that, but uh, on a global scale, so outside of the four month leagues and uh, all that sort of thing, they've increased the amount of diminishing returns on Magic Find in general. Now keep in mind that these increased diminishing returns uh, are in line with things like doubling the drop rates from bosses and stuff like that, so it shouldn't have too big an impact, it just means that you might not feel like you need to run as much magic find as you did before and uh, it's more it's still a viable option you don't need to do it so that's a pretty cool change as well because generally I don't feel I don't enjoy feeling like I have to sacrifice creating a cool build to make a magic find character to be able to require gear so uh I'm, I'm pretty happy about that but some people might disagree because some people do like making their magic find characters but we'll see how this plays out currently testing they're doing a lot of testing with these sorts of things Next up is damage over time effects are being made weaker by default, so they're kind of getting nerfed, but they're uh, increasing the amount of ways that you can scale the damage up of damage over time effects. Currently there's very few things you can do to increase these sorts of things. You're kind of limited to things like um, if it's a fire trap damage over time effect, you can increase like or decrease their resistances. And uh, for things like poison arrow, there's pretty much very little you could do besides cast the vulnerability curse. But apparently, he doesn't say what, but uh, they're increasing the number of ways you can scale this, so I can assume maybe there'll be some passive skills that will increase the amount of damage over time you do. So uh, I imagine these will be explicit damage over time nodes, so that'll be interesting to see what they do. Next up, this one is I think is a really good idea. Uh, they kind of recognize that a lot of players are getting to around level 40 or 50 and then getting stuck and not being able to actually get to end game. Now while it's fine for people to have crappy builds and not be able to get to end game because that encourages them to research more and learn the game more and create better builds, plan better builds, which is fine and I think that's healthy for Path of Exile the game. But they're finding a lot of people are getting stuck simply because they're not able to progress their gear very well. They're not able to get, usually, links. That's one of the biggest problems, I think. And I certainly agree with this. When I first started playing Path of Exile and a lot of people I talk to on YouTube and things like that that are new to the game, uh, they get to this wall kind of at the end of Cruel usually where um, they just can't they just can't get any further. Maybe they even get to Merciless Fell Shrine or Merciless Ledge and just can't progress anymore because they're not able to get these links. It's hard to do, especially when you don't have much in-game experience. So... To combat this, they're making it 233% easier to get four linked socket items, which is, oh, that's so good. Because there's nothing more painful than trying to get, you know, 
trying to get those links so you can actually start getting into endgame and farming stuff. And you basically, you can get away with a bunch of four linked items, but when you can't get like your boots four linked and things like that, and because you also need to get good stats on those boots, obviously, uh, it becomes pretty painful. So now much, much easier to get four link items, which is pretty good. And it won't really have a huge negative impact on the game, I feel, because four links are still not good enough to make a really high-end character, you still need to get those five and six link items. But in line with this, they've increased, uh, they've made it 25% easier to get five linked sockets. So still very difficult to get six link items, but getting a five link, which is often the kind of the minimum amount to make a viable endgame character, is at least having a five link item, at least one. Uh, making that a little bit easier, I think, is a good way to get these get these people uh, past this item wall, this progression wall, and making the game a bit more enjoyable, which I'm all about, making the game easier for people to get into. Pretty cool stuff. More people will be able to see endgame, and less people getting discouraged because of that crappy item grind that you kind of get into at the end of Cruel. So that's pretty awesome stuff. And then the final change coming is they're changing two-handed weapons to be more powerful. They're buffing two-handers. This is pretty cool. And the changes actually sound very similar to what happened in Diablo 3 a while back. Uh, back in the day, history, Diablo 3, uh, two-handers, just no one used them. They were terrible. They didn't they didn't have enough of the increase in the damage you dealt to that or effectiveness to uh, warrant not using either two one-handers or a one-hander and a shield or one-hander and some sort of offhand. And uh, this has also been the case in Path of Exile. Some, you can make some good two-hander builds, like my, you know, Infernal Blow, Heavy Metal Marauder. He does pretty well with a two-hander. But for the most part, uh, especially if you're playing hardcore, sacrificing uh, either getting a shield or getting something else, or, t you know, running two one-handers uh, is a bit of an issue. Now, I actually think, originally I thought that just increasing the damage, and this is kind of what they're going for, just increasing the damage wasn't really enough to overcome this. I actually thought that the issue was more survivability. However, I kind of changed my mind on this and think this will probably be more than enough because uh, with the uh, introduction of these new trigger gems at, in 1.0.0, .0 .0, uh, people will actually be able to set up a lot of defensive procs. So being able to have two six links with a two-hander two weapon, which is currently the only way to get two six links, is actually, I think, a pretty big defensive buff now with all of these trigger gems. Basically, you can set up a six link um, or five link uh, for your main attack on your weapon, and then you can set up a five or six link defensive proc on your armor piece. So I think there's a pretty good defensive buff potential there. So increasing the damage might be enough. Another interesting thing Chris hints at is that two-handed bows, the slower variants, will be getting some implicit mods, as well as a damage buff, to uh, uh, make them more effective. He doesn't say what, and I'm very curious to see what that is, because currently there's not enough uh, reason to use the slower bows. Everyone just goes for thicker bows generally. Sometimes you can go for a slower physical bow, but the really slow ones I feel like should have some sort of uh, advantage, encouragement to use them in certain builds, but currently not the case. So hopefully we see some changes there. And then the final change is that two-handed staffs will be getting new two-handed spell damage mods. So currently the spell damage that they give you isn't really competitive with like using two wands or using a wand and a shield or something like that. So uh, they'll be able to roll higher amounts of spell damage, basically, which means that staffs will become more useful, and they're very underused at the moment, so that's pretty awesome stuff. Overall, a very, very cool pat uh, very cool bunch of info there, and uh, lots of cool stuff coming for 1.0.0. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.